After being a simp for 18 years, I made a deal with the devil. I exchanged my love-stricken mind for a lifetime of happiness. At the time, I didn't understand, how could I be happy without love? Later, my net worth was in the billions, surrounded by handsome men. More than just happiness, it was like reaching the heavens. Chapter 1 Sienna is sick, so I won't be coming back tonight. Ethan's voice sounded on the phone, causing a pang in my heart. He forgot, today is my birthday. I loved him for 18 years, stood by him through the toughest times, finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, about to get engaged. But Sienna's casual remark, Ethan, I'm back, shattered everything. I wiped away the tears in my eyes, forced a smile. Is Sienna okay? Do you need me to get some medicine? Well, I don't have anything to do, should I go check on her? Before I could finish my sentence, Ethan impatiently cut me off with a no need, and hung up. I stared blankly at the table full of dishes cooling down, all of Ethan's favorites. How could this be happening? Just last night, he was holding me, promising a surprise for today. I had already found the engagement ring in his pocket. When Sienna tearfully called, he coldly claimed he already had me in his heart. I downed a whole bottle of red wine, tears streaming down my neck. Whimpers turned into sobbing, from suppressed emotions to heart-wrenching pain. Who's crying? It's me. Accompanied by mocking laughter, as though someone had just watched an extremely farcical comedy. Who's laughing? Through tear-blurred eyes, I saw a dark mist drifting in front of me. Betsy, the pain you exude is truly delicious. Make a deal with me, I can help you. This wine was strong, not sure what had entered my drunken stupor. I chuckled foolishly, reaching out to touch the black mist. Hey, can you make me happy? It hurts too much, loving someone hurts too much. Furrowing my brows, I slammed the table, sobbing. I know I'm despicable, but I can't control it, I really love Ethan. The black mist drifted closer. I can give you happiness, but you must trade your most precious possession. Extend your hand and let me see what is your most precious possession. Wiping away tears, I reached out my hand. Hmm. For you, your most precious possession seems to be love, so I'll take away your love-stricken mind. In an instant, something seemed to leave my body, and I felt a lightness throughout. You. My eyes rolled back, and I fainted completely. Chapter 2 Early in the morning, the incessant ringing of my phone woke me up. Rubbing my temples, I answered irritably. Who the hell is this? Are you rushing to be reincarnated? Ethan hesitated for a moment on the other end of the call, confirming my number. Betsy? His voice turned colder. Did you drink last night? With whom? I replied impatiently. None of your business. Ethan's tone grew impatient. Iron my suit and bring it to the office. And, I didn't eat well last night, make something and bring it over. Sienna is here too, she can't eat much, buy some hot porridge on your way and bring it. Half awake, I glanced at my phone. Strangely, looking at the screen with the name, Ethan, I felt not just bitterness or sweetness, but not even resentment. It was as if he was just an irrelevant stranger, like the feeling of being disturbed early in the morning by a wrong number. I suddenly remembered the absurd dream from last night. I couldn't have really traded away that so-called love-stricken mind, could I? Betsy? Impatient urging came from Ethan on the phone. I snapped back to reality, said, okay, and immediately hung up. I powered off my phone, turned around, covered myself with a blanket, and went back to sleep. What does it matter if Ethan is hungry? I'm not his mother. As for Sienna, she previously stood before me, looking down on me, saying I was the surplus one. Well, she shouldn't expect this surplus person to bring her food. I'd be lucky if I didn't spit at her. Ah. Lazily sleeping is truly blissful. Chapter 3 After graduation, I had been helping Ethan with his business, without a job of my own. Now that his career was thriving, Sienna had become his personal secretary, and I was no longer needed. Free from being a corporate slave, I slept in until noon. Upon waking up, I reached for my phone to order takeout, 
but noticed several missed calls from Ethan. I ignored them, but accidentally opened TikTok while swiping. A video popped up. Searching for my sister across the internet. I thought it was just some entertainment gimmick. But as I clicked on it, it turned out to be Victor, the prince of the prestige group, holding a sign, tears welling up in his eyes, searching for his long-lost sister. Out of curiosity, I continued watching. When my sister was born, she was taken away by someone with ill intentions, and we don't know where she was taken. Over the years, our family has been searching for my sister, but we never received any news. Victor choked up as he said. Now that my grandfather is critically ill and wishes to see his granddaughter before he passes, we have no choice but to ask the vast internet community for help in finding her. If you come across a girl with the following characteristics, please inform us immediately, we will greatly appreciate it. Upon hearing the words, greatly appreciate it, my interest was piqued. Over the years, I didn't have a single penny of my own savings, all my income was foolishly transferred to Ethan's account. Living frugally, I kept Ethan well-fed and presentable, allowing him to socialize outside. Now that he's become a big boss, but I'm not his boss lady. Since I was already prepared to kick Ethan out, what I needed most now was money. I took out a notebook and earnestly noted down the physical characteristics Victor mentioned. A heart-shaped birthmark on the left side of the waist. I noted. Big eyes, monolid. I noted. Most importantly, born with six fingers. I. The more I wrote, the more unbelievable it seemed. How did this sound more and more like me? I was found by Ethan's mother in the garbage bin downstairs in the community, brought back home and raised as her own daughter alongside Ethan. Considered childhood sweethearts with Ethan. I treated Ethan so well, partly because of my damn love-stricken mind before, and partly to repay Ethan's mother. When Ethan's mother found me, I had an extra soft and squishy extra pinky on my right hand. She took me for corrective surgery and even kept photos from that time. I had a heart-shaped birthmark on my lower back, and Ethan often teased me about my monolid eyes. Could it be that I am Victor's sister? Chapter 4 As Ethan walked in, he saw me sitting in the living room with a suitcase. He instinctively frowned. What are you doing? I didn't say anything about your antics during the day, and now you're up to something again? He sighed. Forget it, is dinner ready? Go change your clothes, let's eat. I looked up at him, unflinchingly saying. I didn't do it. Ethan paused, then shook his head, looking tired and irritated. I took care of the sick Sienna last night, and today I was busy handling work at the company. I'm already tired, can't you understand? Can't you stop bothering me? I know yesterday was your birthday, I didn't forget at all. Today, I'm making up for it with this gift. He reached into his pocket, took out the blue velvet box, and looked like he was bestowing a favor. Betsy, I've decided to. Ethan, I'm leaving. I interrupted him. Ethan's pupils suddenly constricted, instantly gripping the box tightly. Leaving? Where are you going? I glanced lightly at the box in Ethan's hand, chuckling softly. It's none of your concern anymore. Ethan, I'll make it easy for you and Sienna. The things inside here, give them to the person you really want to give them to. A hint of nervousness appeared in Ethan's eyes, but his face remained indifferent. Betsy, stop joking. Is this not your home? Where else do you want to go? Home. I felt like I was hearing a huge joke. Do you know? Today, when I was packing my things, I realized that after living in this house for so many years, all my belongings could fit in this one suitcase. Even the things you stored for Sienna outnumber mine. I gripped the handle of the suitcase tightly, step by step walking towards the door. As I touched the doorknob, my wrist was suddenly grabbed tightly by a large hand. I raised my head, taking in Ethan's bewildered expression. He swallowed and looked into my eyes firmly, almost threateningly saying a sentence. Betsy, once you walk out this door, you won't be able to come back, are you sure? I tugged at the corner of my mouth, my face showing no emotion. I am not more sure about anything than this. Can you let go now? You're hurting me. 
Ethan paused, subconsciously letting go of my hand. I swiftly walked out, not looking back, and got into a taxi. As the breeze blew past my ears, I couldn't help but squint. My heart was pounding, feeling like, by taking this step, my future would rush off in an unimaginable direction. Chapter 5 The process of recognizing each other was much faster than I had imagined. It felt like one moment I had just stepped into the gates of the prestige group, and the next moment I was holding a paternity test, being led into the Shing family's villa by a teary-eyed Victor. Victor pointed to the people on the sofa, introducing them one by one. Betsy, this is your second brother Jonathan, who went off to the entertainment industry, the least promising one in the family. I looked at my refined second brother, feeling a bit nervous. So, the least promising one Victor mentioned was actually the award-winning film emperor. Betsy, this is your third brother Oliver, he's into painting, full of artistic germs. I stared at my third brother with golden-rimmed glasses, feeling a bit stunned. Turns out, my third brother is an internationally renowned painter, with each painting being worth six figures. Betsy, this is your elder sister Sophia, who's decent-looking. I covered my heart that was beating rapidly. So, decent-looking refers to an Asian beauty. Tears in my eyes, I opened my arms wide. Brothers and sisters, I finally found you. Elder brother. Pause talking, time for a hug. Second brother. Pause acting, time for a hug. Third brother. Pause painting, time for a hug. Elder sister. Pause winking, time for a hug. Well, elder sister is indeed the best to hug. Chapter 6 That night, elder brother announced on social media. Little sister Betsy has been found, here's a casual million red envelope to thank everyone. The entire internet praised the prestige group's generosity. I truly experienced the joy of being an heiress. Walking through my walk-in closet was like strolling through a mall, with a dazzling array of jewelry. Second brother filmed a short drama series dedicated to me. Third brother painted an abstract painting for me directly. Elder sister gave me a complete makeover, making me stunning instantly. Even my least favorite single eyelid was expertly transformed by elder sister. An elder brother. He handed me a billion-dollar project to play around with. Betsy, feel free to invest, treat it as pocket money if you lose, and it's all yours if you win. It's been a while since I felt this passionate. After graduation, upon Ethan's persuasion, I gave up the olive branch from a prestigious company and became his personal secretary, handling both his personal life and work. Putting his interests first, charging ahead in everything. Slowly losing myself in each, Betsy, thank goodness you're here. I had forgotten how determined I once was to make my mark and achieve something of my own. Going through some documents, I discovered that both companies were considering financing. Coincidentally, one of them was Ethan's Ethscene Tech. Isn't it ironic? The company's name was chosen back when Ethan and Sienna were deeply in love. Even after they broke up, and he was about to get engaged to me, the name remained Ethscene Tech. I am scared and grateful at the same time. Thank goodness the black mist took away my love brain. Otherwise, I would still be steadfastly playing the emotional alchemy stone between Sienna and Ethan. Chapter 7 This can be considered my first project that I truly led. I won't make biased decisions out of selfishness. I brought out the vigor I had during the college entrance examination years, repeatedly considering those numbers in the thick stack of data. I know that regardless of which company, our financing is a timely help. Once the project is successful, it will be a catalyst for both companies to go public. The untimely phone rang. I put down the documents in my hand and hesitated for two seconds before answering the flashing Ethan on the phone screen. Betsy, where is the medicine box at home? I burned my arm. For some reason, Ethan's voice sounded a bit aggrieved over the phone. Out of obligation, I should express concern for him. But I didn't want to. It's on the second shelf of the bedside table on the second floor, if there's nothing else, I'll hang up. Don't hang up yet. Ethan took a deep breath and finally hesitantly said. Betsy, I know you must have suffered a lot outside, it's time to come back. 
Seeing my lack of reaction, Ethan's voice became a bit urgent. Betsy, I can't be without you. I'm used to you picking out my suits every morning, tying my tie for me. I'm used to coming home every evening and drinking the soup you made for me. I'm used to no matter what I do, you unconditionally stand by my side. Since my mom passed away, you're the only one I have left, how can you just leave like this? Come back, I'm begging you, please? Listening to him, scenes of Ethan's mother's death and the moments when Ethan and I relied on each other flashed before my eyes. But besides reminiscing about my childhood, I couldn't empathize with Ethan. I just feel like an old woman, enduring the ridicule and mockery from Ethan and Sienna, willingly burning myself out for Ethan without holding back. I truly feel like a big fool. Now Ethan wants me to come back and continue being the old woman, unless I've truly lost my mind. I'm just a grain of white rice on the wall, while Sienna is a red rose. Now he's putting on this pitiful look for everyone to see? Ethan, everything you said, Sienna can do perfectly well. So, your reasons are invalid, I reasonably reject them. After hanging up the phone quickly, I added Ethan to my blacklist. Looking back at the two documents on the table, all the data seemed to become clear again. I discarded the materials from Ethscene Tech and invested in another cutting-edge company. Chapter 8 Fourth sister knew I had been busy recently, so she took me to various fun places when I finally relaxed. Beauty is useful, but money is the real key. When these two are combined, it's simply unbeatable. I followed fourth sister and smoothly navigated through various circles. Today, a first-line male celebrity wanted to enter my harem. Tomorrow, a new wealthy entrepreneur sent me a large diamond ring. Overall, after a fun week, my phone had 50 high-quality handsome men added to it. Early in the morning, looking at the 50 a good morning, Betsy, a messages on my phone, I was extremely happy. One of them, named Lou, a contestant from a talent show, contacted me the most frequently. Has Betsy had breakfast? It's getting chilly recently, remember to keep warm. I happily drank my milk and replied. Having it now. Ding. Another notification on my phone. Lou said. Recharge your energy. Another day full of vitality. Accompanied by a classic mirror selfie in the gym wearing a tank top. Even lifted the hem of the tank top, revealing a hint of muscle definition. Oh, the young guys really know how to play. Amused, I replied. Nice physique. Lou was as happy as a wagging puppy on the other end. Betsy, there's a competition tonight, will you come watch live? I replied. Can't make it, but I can watch the live broadcast and cheer for you remotely. I cheered enthusiastically in front of my tablet, but that night Lou got eliminated. I opened my phone, ready to comfort Lou, only to see typing displayed. My typing paused. Lou sent a sad expression. Betsy, I got eliminated, I'm so sad. Can you see if there's anything you can do to help me? I really want to debut. I was instantly baffled. How long have we known each other? Isn't he being too straightforward? Seeing my silence, Lou sent another shy expression. Sis, you're my only sister. As long as I can debut, I'm willing to do anything, crazy hint. Lou's sunny boy image completely collapsed in my eyes. Any hint of interest I had was completely gone. I just wanted to say, good riddance. This kind of person entering the entertainment industry would be the end of it. I was about to give Lou a good scolding when my phone rang. Seeing the word, Sienna, popping up, I furrowed my brows. Are these two ever going to stop? Chapter 9 Sienna's voice carried a hint of suppressed unwillingness and sadness. Betsy, come take a look at Ethan. Oh right, they still don't know my last name is Sheng now. Ethan is allergic to alcohol, but he still forced down two bottles of it. I want to take him to the hospital, but he won't let me touch him, kept calling out your name. For the sake of all these years, can you come and save him? I rolled my eyes. If you want to save someone, call an ambulance. Do I look like I have a magic potion or a medical degree? My fingers tapped on the keyboard rhythmically, seeking advice on a professional lawyer website. 
Lawyer, if he dies in this situation, will I be held responsible? No, you won't be, but you might face moral condemnation. After consulting the lawyer, Sienna kept rambling on the phone. Betsy, I admit defeat. Today, I accidentally overheard Ethan talking with the executives. They plan to rename the company Betsy Technology after going public. I was on the verge of collapse. You have no idea what I sacrificed to be by his side, I. I hung up abruptly and then proceeded to blacklist Sienna too. Then I dialed 120. Afraid that the medical staff might be too gentle, I specifically instructed them. This patient is tough, if he refuses to get in the ambulance, just knock him out and take him away. Phew, this way I won't face moral condemnation, right? Hmm. In less than half an hour, that kid Lou actually sent me 99 messages. It was starting to annoy my eyes. I casually blacklisted him as well. Then I randomly picked a handsome guy from my friends list to chat with. Hey, want to show off your abs? The handsome guy immediately sent a sexy selfie, looking thrilled. Quickly, let's feast my eyes on this. Chapter 10 What I never expected was that the talent show unexpectedly added a revival round. Lou made a bewildered return and even debuted. Although not in the spotlight, he successfully signed with a good company and had decent resources. Until one day at a cocktail party, I watched as he eagerly ran to deliver a bag to a middle-aged rich woman, calling her, sister. In that moment, I understood. He had found his one and only sister. When the rich woman noticed me looking in their direction thoughtfully, she raised her glass to me from afar and even pinched Lou who was next to her. Lou flashed an awkward smile and nodded slightly at me as a form of greeting. I couldn't hold back the scene in front of me and quickly turned to find my elder brother's figure. But I saw two sharply dressed men surrounding my elder brother. The back of one of them seemed somewhat familiar. Seeing me approach, my elder brother looked as if he had seen a savior. This is my sister, Betsy. I've entrusted her with handling the financing matters between our two companies. The decision lies with her, so you can discuss it with her. After speaking, the two men in front of my elder brother turned back simultaneously, and my elder brother left without any sentimentality. Miss Shang, hello, I am from Ethsene Tech. As I looked at Ethan, his words abruptly stopped, his smile gradually stiffened, and even the muscles on his cheeks twitched slightly. In the moment when Ethan and I locked eyes, the general manager of another cutting-edge technology company quickly approached and extended his hand towards me. Hello, Miss Shang. As I regained my composure, I shook his hand. Ethan seemed a bit stunned, his lips moved slightly, but no sound came out. However, as if it were muscle memory, I quickly identified what he was trying to say. How could this be? In front of Ethan, I handed the signed documents to the general manager and even gave him a hug. Pleasure doing business with you. Until we walked out of the lobby together, Ethan didn't say a word. Chapter 11 Why are you following me? Ethan followed me all the way, shamelessly walking about a meter behind me, unable to shake him off. When I entered the women's restroom, he waited outside, even thoughtfully holding my bag for me. I scrutinized him from head to toe, even suspecting if he was someone else disguised as Ethan. Confirmed. Original with slight flaws. Ethan stood in front of me with his head down, greedily looking at me. Betsy, I haven't seen you in a long time. I chuckled coldly. Was he trying to play the emotional card for financing? Ethan, who are you putting on this show for? Do you think saying that will soften me? Impossible. Once signed, it's like spilled water. You should go finance elsewhere. Before I could finish my sentence, Ethan pulled me into his arms. He held me tightly, his chin resting on my shoulder, and his voice hoarse when he spoke. Betsy, let me hold you for a while, okay? Just a short while. I've been so tired lately, and only when you're by my side can I calm down. He held me as if he were greedy, smelling the familiar scent on me. Some cold liquid soaked my neck. Seeing me stop struggling, he hugged me even harder, buried his head deeper, and cried more intensely. And all I could think about was this dress that cost six figures, an average person's annual salary. 
ruined by his crying. Should I make him pay for it? Oh well, he's at least an acquaintance. I'll give him a discount. Chapter 12 After Ethan finished crying, his eyes only slightly reddened. Softness added to his usually cold face. I timely added. I will send the compensation for this dress to your company. Remember to transfer the payment on time. The corner of Ethan's mouth visibly twitched. Okay. As we neared the door, Ethan remembered that I couldn't drive, so I didn't have my own car. A glimmer appeared in his eyes. Betsy, it's late. Shall I take you home? I chuckled lightly. Sure. But. I pointed to a row of handsome men coming down from some supercars ahead. You'll have to compete with them. Ethan froze, his steps faltering. A tall, handsome man was the first to rush to me, draping his coat over my shoulders. This brother here is so thoughtless. How could he let Betsy walk to the door in high heels? Her ankles will get sore. If it were me, I would definitely carry Betsy like a princess, not letting her shoes touch any dust. A princess like Betsy, I can't bear to see her tired. The familiar tone left me a bit caught off guard. Although I had goosebumps all over my back, I still pretended to enjoy the attention, casting a meaningful glance at Ethan. Ethan pursed his lips, the muscles on his face tensing, clearly recalling something. Back then when Sienna returned, she didn't hold back on these kinds of cunning words. How can Betsy be so bad at taking care of people? My heart aches for her. Ethan, have I gotten too close to you, making Betsy unhappy? Why didn't Betsy let you come pick me up? Isn't it normal for friends to help each other? Besides, I'm afraid of the dark when walking alone at night, and you know that. By the time Ethan snapped out of it, I had already gotten into the handsome man's Maybach. I bid good night to ten handsome men at the same time, while also reciting some lines to the handsome guy. It's great to have a friend like you. I really wish you could always be by my side. Seeing the handsome guy blush, I copied and pasted this sentence to the dozens of his remaining brothers. Chapter 13 Sienna received the bill for the dress I had sent to the company, immediately calling me with the company phone, looking like she was about to interrogate me. Haven't you already broken up with Ethan? Why are you still entangled with him? I felt a bit helpless. It's just about a dress, can't you think of anything else? It's a shame you're not writing novels. Sienna coldly snorted. Betsy, we're both women, who do you think you're fooling? She paused and continued. Fine, I'll give you the check directly, let's meet in person. I agreed, and we arranged to meet at the cafe downstairs from their company. I randomly picked a handsome guy to drive me in a Ferrari. Sienna was shocked by my ostentatious and cool entrance, her eyes almost popping out of her head. She hurriedly took a big sip of coffee to hide her emotions, but ended up coughing. I went over to help her by patting her back, but she pushed me away. Sienna stared at me intensely for a long time, then suddenly chuckled self-deprecatingly, her eyes becoming hollow and distant. Betsy, do you believe there are demons in this world? The smile faded from my face, and I tapped the table, signaling Sienna to continue. Sienna chuckled bitterly. If I told you I made deals with demons twice, you'd probably think I'm crazy. The demon said, I can trade my most precious possession for anything I desire. The first time, I traded Ethan's true feelings for my future. Later, I met the demon again, and I regretted it. But the demon said sold items couldn't be returned. So the second time, I chose to trade my future for you to leave Ethan. Everything fell into place. So the demon finally found me, trading a lifetime of happiness for my love-struck brain. Sienna cried and laughed in front of me, like a complete madwoman. I calmly watched her, occasionally handing her a tissue. Suddenly, Sienna grabbed my hand tightly, trembling, and said. Betsy, you have almost everything now. Please fulfill me, stay away from Ethan, okay? I sighed and pointed to the Ferrari that had brought me there just now. Do you see that Ferrari outside? The owner is a mixed-race male model, with a model-like face and a perfect physique. And he, is just a fish in my pond. 
So, Sienna, you really don't need to worry at all. Leaning in close, I whispered each word into Sienna's ear. Ethan, whom you cherish so dearly, means nothing to me now. With that said, I took the check from the table and left briskly. Chapter 14 I don't know if everyone who has made a deal with it will encounter a visit from the demon. But I saw it again. The dark, swirling mist suddenly appeared by my bed. Betsy, how about it, do you have anything else you'd like to trade now? Your most precious possession right now is happiness, and you can get a lot of good things in exchange. I shook my head and directly rejected the demon. I now have the loving dinner made by my eldest brother in the morning. Opening my phone to see my second brother publicly showing his love for his little sister on social media. Next door, my third brother designed a princess room according to my preferences in his villa. If I feel lonely at night, I can go and cuddle with my soft and fragrant fourth sister. If I feel like having some fun with a man, I can easily summon a high-quality handsome man on my phone. What more could I possibly want? The demon left dejectedly, looking as if it regretted making a deal with me. It's just like doing business, there are always profits and losses. The demon will get used to it eventually. Chapter 15 The project I invested in was successful, and the cutting-edge technology smoothly went public. I became even more prominent in the social circle, with handsome men constantly flattering me. Ethan somehow managed to secure investments and also went public almost at the same time. He even renamed the company to Betsy Technologies. It's said that on the day of the renaming, Sienna tearfully handed in her resignation letter, which Ethan agreed to without even looking at it. It seemed like he completely cut off his emotions and threw himself wholeheartedly into work, driving Betsy Technologies to thrive like a madman. I wonder if I somehow provoked him. If I did, then I'm honored. Chapter 16 During Qingming Festival when Ethan's mother was visiting the tomb, I ran into Ethan again. It had been a year since we last saw each other. He looked much more mature, with a cold and weathered look in his eyes. We reminisced about childhood memories in front of Ethan's mother's grave, like old friends. I said. Do you remember when we were kids, the teacher asked you to stand outside as punishment, and without hesitation, I followed you out? That was pretty loyal of me, right? Ethan said. Of course, I remember. But I also remember it was because you slipped a comic book onto my desk, and when the teacher found it, I was the one called out for punishment. I said. Do you remember what I made for you the first time I cooked for you? Ethan said. I do. You made Coca-Cola chicken wings, but you mistook vinegar for Coke, so it turned out sour for me. I said. Well, do you remember my handsome deskmate? One day, he came to school with panda eyes, wondering who had given him a beating. Ethan said. I did. Because I accidentally overheard him bragging to someone about how much you liked him. The atmosphere suddenly grew tense. Ethan turned slowly towards me, looking deeply into my eyes. Betsy, we were so close, just that close, and we could have been married. But we missed our chance, and it's never going to happen again, right? Missed opportunities are just a moment. However, it takes a lifetime to make up for many of those moments. I stayed silent as Ethan, lost in thought, continued to gaze ahead at the flowers and grass, his eyes unfocused. The day you left, I felt empty inside. But later on, I realized how quiet a house becomes when you live there alone. I learned how much thought goes into choosing suits and accessories for different occasions. I discovered that everything I thought was straightforward actually requires attention to so many details. I realized, I can't live without you. He sniffed, wiping his face. Betsy, do you know? I thought I was being good to you by having Sienna as my secretary, so you wouldn't have to worry about work. But I realized it was tormenting you. Like you used to, I kept a light on, sitting alone on the couch all night staring at the dark TV. I tried to understand your feelings, and the loneliness of waiting for someone, it's like slowly torturing emotions over a fire. Once it's burned out, there's truly nothing left. Listening to his words, scenes from the past played out before my eyes. Back then, I would often sit in the living room holding a pillow, waiting for Ethan to come back early. 
Ethan couldn't drink, but Sienna always pretended to be drunk after gatherings, letting Ethan take her home. As he escorted her home, she would grab his hand and confess her feelings under the guise of being drunk. I would wait here all night, while they were off being ambiguous over there. What you can't have always stirs up trouble, and those who are favored act with impunity. From the initial anticipation to a glimmer of hope, then to numb despair. In this relationship, from the start, I tried my best to reach Ethan. But Ethan wasn't willing to take a single step forward. Now that I'm back where I started, Ethan is once again running with all his might. But we're like two intersecting lines that have missed the point of intersection, only getting further apart. Chapter 17 After chatting with Ethan, we decided to head back. It was that time of day again, the most tangled moment. I scrolled through my phone, finally pausing at the newly added esports heartthrob, Saxon. I heard that Saxon had lost all his money in a startup and was forced to switch to professional gaming. Due to his overly dramatic way of speaking, a flawless face, and a not-so-bright brain outside of gaming, he suddenly became the hottest esports heartthrob. Ethan was already used to it, waiting with me until the cool sports car arrived, then driving off in his Mercedes S600. The car window rolled down, revealing a devastatingly handsome face. Hey, woman, dare to call me to pick you up in a car? His tone was too bold from the get-go. I opened the car door, casually pinching his face. All right, with your overbearing CEO attitude, do you still think you're a demon? Saxon rolled his eyes. It's only because you're in such a huge loss that the higher-ups demoted me to be a human, saying I should understand the human world before going back to being a demon. I leaned in, suggesting a brilliant idea. How about this? Since I have plenty of money, I can provide you with the capital for your business. If you want to continue with esports, that's fine, I have enough money to cover it. It'll be like repaying a debt. The only condition is that you have to let me kiss you. Saxon's eyes lit up. Really? I nodded firmly. Absolutely. Deal. As soon as Saxon agreed, I planted a kiss on his face. The feeling of kissing a demon, well, it wasn't bad at all. I had wanted to try it for a while now. Using my least valuable money to exchange for multiple positive values. I was raking it in. Having an esports heartthrob endorse the company. Getting in the good graces of a demon. And expanding the variety of species in the fish pond. I am truly the best at doing business, right? 